In early modern Italy, abortion was a fact of life. Women had abortions and had abortions forced on them. Single women, married women, elite, and working class women. They had abortions when pregnancy and childbirth seemed threatening, either socially or medically. They had abortions to conceal sexual relations or to avert the social and material hardships children brought. They also had abortions to manage potentially dangerous health issues. In some circumstances, it was considered a sin and a crime, while in others, it wasn't. Sometimes abortion resulted in prosecution and punishment, but often it was ignored or responded to with sympathy and support. Despite heated rhetoric and new legislation trying to change mentalities and regulate its practice, abortion remained widely sought, accessible, and tolerated. My book tries to understand a complex and ambivalent landscape that has too often been forgotten, ignored, or misinterpreted, often with troubling consequences even to this day. My goal was to expose the different meanings 16th and 17th century people gave to abortion and how it factored into their lives. I do this by exploring medical, religious, and legal perspectives alongside the recovered words and experiences of ordinary people. I juxtapose official prescriptions with practice, theories with the facts of everyday life, and especially with the lived experience of women. Contrary to what some might assume or argue today, in the early modern period, there was no official and consistent position on the meaning of abortion. Women and men sought abortions for many reasons. Healers at all levels of the medical establishment provided them. Medical, religious, and legal authorities increasingly sought to regulate the practice, but it was not unequivocally prohibited. People in need knew how to navigate restrictions. The ambiguities of the female body and uncertainty surrounding pregnancy and its termination created gray zones, enabling people to seek abortions and healers to provide them. Complex social structures and theological and legal debates almost always mitigated official decrees. The Catholic Church officially regarded procured abortion to be a sin and was increasingly uncomfortable with its toleration, especially by priests. Ecclesiastical authorities proposed new definitions of abortion and intensified moral education. Some threatened harsh punishment, including excommunication. Secular authorities followed the Church's lead, issuing new laws threatening fines, exile, even execution. But in practice, both church and state authorities were ambivalent. Popes, cardinals, bishops, theologians, and confessors debated and often disagreed on the spiritual meanings of abortion and how to handle it in real life. Judges, jurists, and lawmakers debated whether and why abortion could be considered a crime and treated as such. The most influential jurists of the period were reluctant to grant the fetus legal personhood opposing the death penalty for abortion altogether. Crucially, lay people were not passive in this debate. They negotiated with their priests over the meaning of abortion. They resisted the involvement of courts and even challenged or ignored the decrees of their pope. Theology and laws on abortion were often irrelevant compared to the urgent situations they faced. While official Catholic perspectives on abortion moved in a more rigid direction, authorities had to acknowledge that its practice was tied to complex social issues beyond simple solutions. They appreciated the circumstances that motivated people to have or participate in abortions. More often than not, authorities turned a blind eye or offered absolution with secret penance to avoid scandal. In the end, the ambiguity surrounding abortion and the realities that motivated its practice led authorities and society as a whole to prioritize social order over the enforcement of contentious laws. Strict regulation was impossible and often at odds with communal morality. Understandably, most of the existing historiography on abortion in the pre-modern period has focused on official framings, typically within individual fields. I found great richness and layers of complexity in bringing medical, religious, and legal perspectives together in a single study. But I also hope to recalibrate official framings by recovering, as much as possible, how real women experienced abortion within the complexity of their lives. To this end, the book is organized around micro-histories, detailing the experiences of three women at the turn of the 17th century. The details of their lives allow us to see the circumstances that led them to have abortions, 
to understand what abortion meant in the context of their relationships and what was at stake for their families, communities, institutions, and broader society. These stories expose, sometimes in heart-wrenching detail, how official debates landed in the lives and in the bodies of ordinary women, and how and why they made decisions about their reproductive lives within the often limited means available to them. In short, abortion was a fact of life in early modern times as it is today and the complex experiences and voices of those involved need to be heard and taken seriously. I'm honored that abortion in early modern Italy has been shortlisted for the SRS's book prize. My deepest thanks to the prize committee and congratulations to all the shortlisted authors.